So, hi, this is Tsubasa, uh, comes from and based in Japan. Uh, I'd like to introduce you what Xamarin Mac brings to you or not. My session is titled Say Hello to Cocoa Development with Xamarin Mac. So this is session for truly beginners. You know, uh, I am I am an uh, <coughs> awesome English speaker, so <laughs> go easy on me, thank you. Here's an agenda. I'm going to describe what Xamarin Mac is, then take a demo of creating simple Mac application illustrates the power of Xamarin Mac. And if time permits, I want to show you the G app, which ported from Windows Forms to Mac app as a showcase. By the way, anybody who exper experienced with Xamarin Mac? No? Oh, only two? Three? Oh, I thought as much. Let's get started. Uh, <coughs> Xamarin Mac brings full use of Mac APIs to the .NET world. Just-in-time compiler compiles managed code to native code at runtime to the Objective-C world. So there are two runtimes running during the ex execution of Xamarin Mac application. One is mono runtime and one is Objective-C runtime. Uh, mono runtime is embedded into, run uh, into bundle during build process. So no need to install mono runtime in the machine to run. You know that Xamarin iOS has several limitations due to its uh, ahead of time compilation compiler. Just in time compiler of mono runtime enables full of generic support and the execution of dynamically generated code, such as uh, creating types dynamically also, in contrast to Xamarin.iOS. So, our first markup is, uh, contains a text field and a button. Click to show a lot with contents of text field. Text field. So, let's switch to uh, Visual Studio. Here's a look at Visual Studio for Mac. And uh, click a new project. and select uh, Mac app and Coco app. Click next, then name app name. So my first Mac app. And you can select the minimum Mac version you want to run from OS X Lion to uh, Sierra and uh, after the September 25th, uh, also be high Sierra 10.13. So now Sierra and next. Hmm, leave unchanged and create solution. Now project has created a structure is uh, here, including app delegate and info list and entitlements and main CS is the entry point of this app and the main storyboard is a user interface file and uh, its view controller. So. Second step is pressing controls using Xcode because of storyboard design in Visual Studio is not available for Xamarin Mac. So double click and opens up Xcode with a stub project. No. Uh, storyboard in Mac application, including uh, its main menu 
and window controller and its view and view controller. So select window and open an inspector to set window title. My first mark up. Then specify auth save name to main window. And this window can preserve uh, its frame by auth save name, which I specified as a uh, main window, as key in the user defaults so that it appears in the same location when uh, the next time application starts. So, then find the text for fields in object browser. Press it and uh, layout it. As much foot points. So then pressing a button, drag and draw, connect, uh, send. The uh, horizontally and uh, vertical spacing. Okay. And change this button title to greeting. Okay, that's it. Now open the assistant editor to create an outlet. First, in a greeting action, press control and drag it to the file. Show greeting. You can see that. So, uh, an action is a message sent. A message sent by action will be received by view controller in this context. Insert and. Uh, <coughs> When this button manipulates by user, a message named show greeting will send to view controller. So I forgot to set key equivalent. When user hit and return key in the window, this button button manipulates and creating an outlet. Outlet will be created in a header file, so switch to assistant editor to the header file. Click it and drag it, creating a name field. An outlet is a property that references object, typically user interface controls like this. To access control from code behind in Objective C world, sending message via outlet connection. So that's all. Let's back to the Visual Studio with saving document. Now it's time to write the C sharp code in a view controller. If Now open the view controller and expand partial method. Partial show greeting. This partial method is, comes from uh, automatically generated code in uh, designer CS. This is a partial definition. Now uh, creating a message. Bar message. Hello. And uh, this name field dot string value. Creating a alert 
like a message box to var alert equal ns alert and setting a message text then uh, setting an informative text mm, monkey fest then setting a alert style to ns alert style informational so no. Deprecate. So, and then run alert as a model. Alert, run sheet model to the this view related window. So, let's run and see its action. Mm -hmm. Input something interesting to uh, summary mark word. Then, oh, <laughs> hello, summary mark words. Oh, our first markup has been cooked, but at this time, you can terminate up by closing window. No, unable to show window again by clicking dock icon due to lack of some code. So now quit manually. Op opens up uh, app delegate and you should override some method. This is, uh, I think, longest method name in this context. I want to show you override application should terminate after last window closed and re set return to true. <laughs> yeah, truly good method name. What, what describes its action? Clearly, really clearly. Nice, nice. <laughs> then, Close the, when you crawl, click the close button, apps terminated. So, it was easier than, than you had expected, isn't it? So, back to the keynote. And, So next topic is a cocoa binding. Ish. Cocoa binding enables keeping model and view values synchronized with a lot without a lot of glucose, such as this name field of string value is a glucose. Uh, NS object in the Marimac world could raise an alert such as I notify property changed in XAML platforms, such as uh, Silverlight or WPF or so. But this Cocoa binding feature is only supported with Mac, so cannot use in iOS context. Now, Cocoa binding demonstrations, uh, four recipes. Um, firstly, remove glucose from our first Mac app. Uh, this dot name field dot string value to remove and bind to property in view controller. Uh, I am going to create a property named name with type string and bind to property in as a class and lastly bind to multiple values to select one of them. No. You should. So first, reopen a designer CS code and removing an uh, outlet. There's no need to give it and remove it. 
So, I removed the no longer needed name field value and so creating a property, public. Mm, and a string uh, name and this code to this dot name secondary creating a backing field oh, tut, tut, tut. Uh, two property with backing field and uh, create uh, make it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then add a trait attribute to export property references object derived from NS object with its name to the objective C word for use with cocoa binding so outlet then make setter code name equal value surround it with a uh, will change value this will change value name of name and uh, this did change value So, will change value and did change value method calling to notify changing value of the name property. Now, open main storyboard again and back to Xcode. Then right click the text field to remove outlet connection. <laughs> Name field property in view controller is no longer available, so disconnect it. Open bindings inspector. <laughs> This icon illustrates the showing binding inspector and setting value binding. Bind to view controller. Model key is name. By default, value updates when this text field lose focus. To update a value every time value change like settings property change to update source, update source trigger in WPF, enable this continuously updates value. Check it. Save the document and get back to the beer studio. Then execute. Coco binding word. Now you can see the message reflects property value without glucose, you know. Right? So text field in our successfully bound to property references uh, in a string object. I'm gonna show you more complex sample. Bind to any object derived from NS object. So, back to editor and uh, define a new class named person. Public class person. Person. Uh, define a class to represent a person to greet with properties for strings representing a name, public, and a string, 
Oh, I can copy from. <laughs> And uh, length of name, public, and its number, name, length. And also, honorific. Public and string, honorific. And make person class to derive from NS object. Should be NS object and export to object objective C word for use with cocoa binding. Register name of person. <laughs> now, name length is uh, get only property NS number from uh, native int name length or zero. Use new property addition to uh, name should name could be a null so and notify name ranks had changed this will change value name of name ranks and this did change value uh, value name of name ranks then create a we person type to the view controller public person name friend friend and make it back property with backing field then we change Uh, did change and also add an outlet property or oh, don't forget to add as outlet property now should be modified and show greeting method to refer reference a friend property friend name and also initialize it yeah this friend new person hmm. all right open uh, main storyboard again and connect to a uh, friend property now yeah. Bind to controller.name to friend name. <coughs> then also showing a length of name to adding a label. NS U NS label. Uh, uh, label. Adding level and bind to view controller friend name ranks and also in this this controller name uh, is a type of NS level NS level permits uh, only any string value so we should uh, attach a uh, number formatter like a value converter in WPF so NS number format drag and drop so
All right, talking about NS number type, make enabling and disabling button by length of name property, it's easy. NS number is automatically cast to uh, NS boolean, so greeting, select greeting button and enable binding, view controller, friend, name, links. So, US is a name property updates. Uh, and name links will update and greeting button enabled by bound to name links. Lastly, honorific. As a last sample of cocoa binding, make honorific selectable from candidates. First, create, it, create candidates as an array of strings. So, uh, here, public and a string array, honorific. honorific. So new honorific uh, in uh, so Japanese style honorific such as in a string sum and also in a string sama in a string. Mm, chan and any string uh, kun yeah for analytic in Japanese style and also move to analytic and make it possible with cocoa binding. Then did change value of an analytic. And give an initial value. Spelled so uh, all right. S same open again the main storyboard. <coughs> and press a uh, and it's pop up but button like a combo box drag and drop then bind to uh, content values view controllers oh no the fix all right and uh, should be bind to a uh, selected value to friend on our right then back to visual studio and execute it hmm. Oop. Hmm? 
What's up? Honorifix. Oh, outlet. <laughs> so, my name is Tsubasa, so Tsubasa. I forgot to modify a show greeting. So, this friend name and this friend honorific. <laughs> Here we go again. Tsubasa. Hello, Tsubasa. -san. Oh. And uh, Chan. To be a Madoka Chan. All right. Now, moving to the uh, slide. Koga binding basics. As an outlet attribute and calling a will change value and did change value. <laughs> oh. All right, in the next demonstration, I'm going to show you how to display data using table view, but Oh, time is oh, 41. All right. I'm going to show you how to display data using table view. Tables can get data in two ways. One is a cocoa binding, and the second is I'm going to explain data source pattern. Data source pattern is providing data pro programmatically by implementing a data source class, which has methods that provides a row and current data as a request state. So for your information, when you see, when you use a cocoa bind, binding approach, create a relationship between an uh, array controller instance, which manages the interaction between data, between data object and uh, table view, instead of creating data source class. I think data source part permits a uh, fine control of populating rows compared to cocoa binding, such as dynamic row heights, depending on data. Like so. In this demonstration, I'm going to describe how to implement a class that conforms the NS table view data source and the NS table view delegate protocols through so modifying our first markup. Now, implementing I table view data source and I NS table view delegate and recording previous value. <laughs> First, open the storyboard. Then adding a table view. Table view. And then lay at it. Then create an outlet of NS table view to view controller. Table view has a layered structure to support scrolling. You should see a border scroll view and inside a clip view, then table view shows up. What we need is this table view. So open the assistant controller and create an outlet from this. The history view. And so <coughs> close on. then data source provides data for each columns. Now adding two columns in it and specify its identifier. Identifier is located in uh, this. This should be analytic. Same as property name. This should be a name. 
and then I specify a header set title, name, and online fic. Oh, no, fic. All right. You can specify as you like to the identifier, but for, for convenience, specify the same as property name at this time. Now, save and close Xcode. Then, create a source list of uh, histories, like uh, public list person histories. And then, you know, c -sharp does not supporting protocol in Objective-C context. Protocol is like an interface, but no need to implement all of methods defined. Methods defined in protocol means can be respond to message with a key. Hmm. Implemented method illustrates could respond to the message and not implemented method means could not respond to the key. Thanks to the support feature in Visual Studio for Mac, we can use interface instead of protocol. First, add two interfaces in uh, N view controller, I, N, S, T, full view, data source, and I, N, S, T, full view, delegate. These two interfaces, uh, no, correction. Two protocols are needed to populating data to the table view. So, now Visual Studio could expand method signature of protocols conformed. What we need in NS table view data source protocol is get row count method returns number of rows in data set. So override uh, get row count. All right. Then return histories count. No, 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 no. Count. All right. And uh, Next, populating view for item via get view for item method in table view delegate as requested. So, in the same way as, uh, same way as, uh, as before, override get view for item. <laughs> and then returning uh, view. Uh, so now make this method to returning view filled with text. Get item by row number. Bar item equal this histories at index row number. But row is a n int type, so you should be cast to a int row row. Oh, then. So table view has a make view method. So bar view equal ns table so view table view make view with an identifier. So table view table count dot identifier and owner is this view controller. Then. Uh, text will be filled is uh, name or analytic. So, NS object has value for key method enables us to get value of property by name, by string name. In Xcode, I, I've specified property name as an identifiable column, so use identifier to get value from item. So now, bar text is uh, item 
dot vary for key. Key is a uh, NS string table count identifier. On the this should, this could be null so null propagation empty. <laughs> Any string to empty, sorry. And uh, view text field uh, story object value is a text and returning view. Then connect connect this delegate and data source to our history view table view. Now view it load after now. Uh, History view dot uh, data source is this, and history view delegate is also this. Hmm, what a strange code, you know. Now, show grid modifying the show grid into adding uh, histories. Now, <laughs> histories. Add new person friend name name and uh, honorific equals friend honorific and reloading data. History view to reload data. Reload data. Now, let's take a look. All right, Atsushi san. They're adding uh, history. That's Tsubasa san. And uh, Ben san. Hmm, that's good. And here you go again, and then Madokacha. All right, sounds good. So next, recall value from history. Recalling value is simple, same as before. Overriding a deselect value. Uh, no, 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 the did, did selection did change, or sorry. Override, selection did change. Row is a history view dot selected row, and row should be unselected, so ignore it. Return item is a histories row indexing access. Oh, cast to int and free and honorific hmm. sounds great. Adding uh, sample data. Madoka again. Madoka sama. And uh, Tsubasa. San. Then clicking uh, Madoka sama. You can record the value with uh, did sel selection did change over the method. <sighs> That's all of my demonstration with uh, our first markup. Mm -hmm. 
Here's a summary of live coding, constructing markup using Visual Studio and uh, describe uh, Cocoa Binding Basics with will change value and did change value method calling. And, uh, pa <coughs> and uh, how to deal with up delegate and uh, using objective features such as uh, protocol in C Chef with Visual Studio for Mac. I'd appreciate it if you could see the power of the Max through this demonstration. Now, time permits. Oh, time is short. My less time is short, so, but I'm going to show you the showcase go, go to search app. A first scene search engine for anime series, Easy Order Rabbit. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing. So, this app application is originally created with Windows Forms, and last year I ported, ported this application with Xamarin Mac and published to the Mac App Store. You can, you can find the Mac App Store. App Store. Uh, 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 no, no. No, 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 no. Go to search. Yeah, you can see the go to search in the App Store. English version is available, but my App Store is strangely uh, Japanese more. So <laughs> you can see the English version in your store. No. So I'm going to show you how this application runs. So go to search. Go to search is a scene search engine. So now, prepared image from go to search animation and drag, drag it to my app. Then. Target image was my dropped image, and you you will see the episode information. This this uh, episode information where this frame comes from, right? Now this frame comes from Gochimo Sagiska is is the old uh, rabbit episode eleven, named Stardust My Mine. Uh, uh, Forty minutes and twenty eight second or near. Let's take a look and uh, jump to Nico 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 video in Japan Japanese uh, like YouTube service to jump it to this frame. But unfortunately, access from Singapore is uh, restricted, <laughs> so I can, unfortunately I can't show you how this works. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now. Windows Forms, almost all of you know Windows Forms is one, I think one of cross-platform GUI framework thanks to WinForms implementation in mono runtime. It's the best solution for enterprise apps with common controls, mm, but mono's implementation of the system Windows Forms API is built on top of Carbon. Carbon is a pre uh, API introduced to previously to Coco more, more than decades ago. So, uh, and can only run with mono on 32 bit systems. So, the look and feel of the uh, system Windows Forms applications mimics uh, Windows styles and does not currently render like uh, native OS. OS 10? No, Mac OS application. And in the Sierra, you can't run Windows Forms application via mono runtime due to its system restrictions. So now, my approach of putting Windows Forms apps to the Mac store app is uh, firstly, wash away platform dependent codes like uh, accessing system Windows Forms buttons or uh, 
accessing system drawing rectangles and uh, graphics and uh, system.io to read a file. Also, secondly, construct user interface using XAB for supporting macOS 10.9. Storyboard is uh, introducing Yosemite 10.10. .10, so you wanna, if you wanna supporting a 10.9 um, uh, Mavericks, uh, Mavericks, you should, you should, you can't use Storyboard to construct user interfaces. Then implement features using full desktop mono. Zamarima can select a target platform to uh, using. System installed mode, oh, I'm sorry. Install model. And then migrate core features to Xamarin Mac modern framework. Then submit to App Store. Xamarin Mac modern is a target framework Xamarin recommended. So app runs on same tuned framework used by Xamarin iOS. Supporting a, with, a, with supporting a subset of full desktop framework is a only subset, like a PCL. A linker behavior makes bundle size smaller when you use a target framework as modern. Xamarin Mac modern framework, when you use Xamarin Mac modern framework, your project could reference assemblies targeting net standard 1.0 or above, or Xamarin Mac, uh, Xamarin Mac 20 as a Monica string in Nugget package. You can see the project settings, uh, no, 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 project options, build, general, and selecting a target framework. And you can choose the unsupported framework to use a full mono runtime. But if you use an unsupported framework or Xamarin Mac 4, linker behavior does not, doesn't, can, can't be run. So bundle size is increasing to, uh, including mono runtime is uh, 12, 12 megabytes or so, but with, with linker behavior, bundle size is almost five megabytes or lower in a simple, simple cases. Now, migrating core features to the Xamarin Mac modern framework is a, uh, <coughs> originally, Loading DB is a reference to a system IO file stream and reading image and resizing images depending on system drawing namespace. Xamarin Mac Modern does not provide a system drawing, so should replace with a PCL or platform implementation assemblies. Loading DB is uh, supported by PCL storage and a split read image implementation to a platform specific implementation. In a Cocoa development, Core Graphics namespace is uh, useful to the, this kind of image manipulation, reading an image and uh, conforming to a byte array with a 32 bit per pixel ARGB byte array. And resizing image is uh, only manipulating byte array, so it's a platform, it can make, uh, make platform independent and calculate bit vector and searching database and outputting a story info to run the. So, before you submitting an app to the Mac App Store, the, uh, app sandboxing is required for any app distributed from Mac App Store. Modify app sandbox resources by editing entitlements.property list. 
entitlements dot property list and uh, Visual Studio has a property list editor and it firstly enables app sandbox and specifies the feature your app required to access without users in, uh, users permit such as uh, incoming connections or uh, camera cam camera access or location and a user selected files read write you should you should uh, <coughs> you should specify every feature you need to use in your app in this file so um, sandbox violation does not throw um, not authorized exception in .NET world a type of exception depends on operation when you lack of specifying uh, outgoing connections and accessing the server, you get uh, you get a DNS exception. Uh, name result fail to name result exception you you encountered. So to determine whether a violation sandbox violation occurred or not, use a console app to find the source exception, source violation, right? No. Wrap up. Unleash the power of Zamari Mark name. <coughs> Zamari Mark, no need to invoke a simulator or a tethered device. Tethered device as not need it. You you only have to use a Mac, right? And uh, you can cherry pick the best bits of .NET Framework and Cocoa. Now, consider whether sharing more code or writing convenient and efficient platform-dependent code. Platform-dependent code in uh, my app, Gotcha Search, is a core graphics. You can use a net standard 2.0 to use a system dot drawing. No. <coughs> you can share more code with other platform by net standard 2.0. You can consider and you can cho choice. Now, thank you very much for my bad, bad English pro presentation, but uh, you can catch me up uh, on uh, Twitter or Facebook on GitHub and uh, unreadable account name, I'm sorry, but <laughs> so, and today's slide uh, upload it on a speaker deck so you can see after that, after this presentation. And if you have any questions or uh, wanna see more, more complex demonstration, I, I'm, I mean, uh, around uh, or walking around or sitting everywhere, so you can catch me up. Thank you for listening. <laughs>